it's common for us to have a function with some constraint on the variables of that function. So for in this case, we have w, right, which is a function of x, y, and z. But we also have this constraint that z has to be um, equal to x squared plus y squared. Now, it turns out that the derivatives of w, the partial derivatives of w, actually will depend on how you think about this constraint. One way to think about this constraint is that z is the dependent variable, so that, it, so that x and y are independent. Once you've chosen x and y, then z is fixed by that choice. But another way to think about it might be that z and x are independent. So once you've chosen z and x, then this constraint fixes what y has to be. Or that z and y are independent, and that x depends on them. So we'll see that depending on how we think about it, we get different answers for, for the partial derivative of w here. Let's look at um, dw dx. In the first case, let's assume that x and y are independent. So if w is x squared plus y squared plus uh, z squared, then when we take the derivative of w with respect to x, um, we get first the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. Since y is independent of x, making changes in x will have no effect on y. So this will be constant. Um, but now z, we're assuming, is defined in terms of x and y. So we'll get 2z times the partial derivative of z with respect to x. Now actually from this equation, we can find the partial derivative uh, with respect to x by taking the derivative of both sides of this equation. So from this equation, the partial derivative of z with respect to x is um, 2x right, plus 0 because the partial derivative of y with respect to x is 0 because y is assumed to be independent. So we find that dw dx is equal to 2x plus um, 2z times dz dx and dz dx is, is 2x. So we have 2x, oops, 2x times 1 plus 2z if we factor out the 2x. Now let's think about it, though. In this case, we, we said that x and y were independent. Right? Z was the dependent variable. This was the result that we got. Now let's do this derivative again. This time, we're going to assume that it's x and z that are independent. So going back up to our definition of, of w here, we take the derivative of x squared with respect to x, we get 2x. But if x and z are independent, then that means that x and z determine y. So y actually depends on z and x. So when we go to take the derivative of y squared this time, y is a function of x. So we get 2y derivative of y with respect to x. Um, plus, let's see, if we take the derivative of z squared with respect to x, since in this case we're assuming that x and z are independent, now the derivative of z squared is 0. OK. so. Let's do what we did before and now find the derivative of y with respect to x, assuming that x and z are independent. So starting from our constraint again, z equals x squared plus y squared. This says how, x, how z and x determine y. We take the derivative of both sides with respect to x as we're hoping to get dy dx. So when we do that, since uh, if we take the derivative of z with respect to x, since we're assuming that x and z are independent, that derivative is 0. And then the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. And the derivative of and the derivative of y squared would be 2y dy dx. That means that dy dx is negative 2x over um, 2y, right? Or negative x over y if we reduce. Substituting that in, we now see that dw dx in this case is 2x plus 2y times negative x over y. The y's cancel. We get 2x minus 2x equals 0. Oh, so we got a completely different answer for the derivative when we said that x and z were independent. In this case, the derivative turned out to be something really different. Now, that may seem weird at first, because we're talking about the derivative of this function w. How does the constraint play in? Well, this example is kind of nice because you can visualize um, what's going on here. W basically me measures the square of the distance of your location from the origin. So given x, y, and z, the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared um, would be the distance from the origin. So this is basically the square of the distance from the origin. The constraint is that z 
x and y have to lie on an elliptic paraboloid, right? So we have an, an elliptic paraboloid. This is the constraint. No matter what choice of x and y we make, we're going to have to choose z, or x. if we choose x and z, then, then we're going to have to choose y, etc., so that we lie on this paraboloid. And w is, um, is the distance from the origin. So let's say we're somewhere on this paraboloid, and we want to find how does w change when you change x. So <clears throat> if x and y are independent, then um, in, order to, in, in order to change x, then z is going to have to move. So, um, right, so when you change x, let me draw my x, y, and z axes on here. So here's the x, y, and z. When you, when you change x, if y is independent, you can't change y, um, which means that the z will have to compensate. So if you, if you try to move out, you would go off the paraboloid unless the z also increased. And if the z also increase, then your distance from the origin is going to increase. And hence, um, when x and y are independent, then when you change x, the distance from the origin changes. We get a non-zero derivative. On the other hand, in the second case, we found that dw dx was zero. That's because we assumed that x and z were independent. Now, um, if you're going to change x, um, and, um, and z is independent, then when you increase x, z is held constant, right, because it's an independent variable, and therefore the only way to stay on the paraboloid if you increase x is to also change the y value. But if you change the y value, you're just going to be circling around a contour line of this paraboloid, and so your distance from the origin doesn't change at all as you do that. And, since in, this, and so in this case, dw to x is equal to 0. So the, the point is that when you have a constraint, that determines a relationship between the variables, how you think about which variable that constraint is determining, whether x and y are determining z, or x and z are determining y, and so on, how you think about it determines what the partial derivative would be, because this constraint changes the way, um, the way w changes, or the way the original function changes when you change the variables. That means that we have to be careful about notation, because if, if we look at both of these, they both say dw dx, but they have different answers. What we'll do, if you're talking about dw dx, obviously x is one of the variables that's independent, because you can look at how w changes when you change x. x must be independent. What we'll do is we'll say, OK, it's obvious that x is independent. Then we'll just list the other variables that are independent. In this first case, dw, let's see, x was independent and y was independent. So I'll just list y here as a little note to myself that y is one of the independent variables. Okay, so when I use this notation, then it's safer. In this case, dw dx, obviously x is independent. The other independent variable was z, so I'll make a little note of that independent variable. So let's just do some more examples of these, and we'll see. Um, had, now that we know what the notation means, then we can just um, work through these and see what we get in these um, constrained problems.